spent afternoon shooting on Hollywood Drive has hospitalized one woman. Good evening, I'm Sean Fawcett. There were some very crafty thieves in the aftermath of Tuesday's storms who are out looking for something very specific at the expense of tornado victims. It was just two weeks from today that tornadoes blew through the campus of Union University. Selma residents have seen construction on Highway 64, especially near the 45 bypass since this spring. We have been following this story from the onset, and tonight we can tell you progress is being made. I'm Sean Fawcett at the Madison County EMA, where citizens address siren concerns. I'll have details. The parents we spoke with tonight believe they're being shut out of the process to decide their children's future. Authorities say they're investigating the death of a 16 year old who drowned in a pond. The message of tonight's special chapel service was unity and renewal. Well, a fire tore through this apartment building behind me shortly after one o'clock this afternoon off of Old Hickory Boulevard. Those families that were affected have been displaced by that fire. They say efforts by the police, by the fire department rather, and a locksmith helped save their lives. Flames severely damaged this apartment building in the Heritage Apartment Complex. The six units had to be evacuated as the fire consumed at least two of the units. Christina Siebert Cannon was at work when she heard about the damage to her apartment. 1.20, I was at work and my mother called me because she's been keeping my children and she told me that my apartment was on fire and that I needed to come home. I'll pull up and see that the apartment above me is ablaze and my children are outside along with my mother. Tammy Mockridge was working on her computer when she heard an odd noise coming from surrounding apartment units. So I looked outside, came out, and I just seen smoke all over the place. Grabbed my dog and came outside. We've been milling around. Mindy Belt, who was babysitting her grandchildren during the fire, says the firefighters weren't the only heroes on the scene. There was a man, he's a hero, the man that was knocking on these doors. I don't know what the place is that he works at, but it's a, a locksmith place. His name is Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. As with many residential fires, the Red Cross was also on the scene. They were offering assistance to anyone who was in need. We're live in North Jackson. Sean Fawcett, ABC7 Eyewitness News. The long trip towards recovery begins for families in the Steeplechase subdivision in North Jackson, where Tuesday night's tornadoes left many families homeless. Joe Jones lived in this house on Wendell for over 18 years. Although damaged by tornadoes, he's confident he'll live here again. We'll build back. We're not going nowhere. Lord willing, we'll build back. He's a truck driver and was out of town when tornadoes tore through his North Jackson subdivision Tuesday night. When he returned home Thursday, the street where he lived for almost 20 years looked like a war zone. It's bad, but uh, it's, praise the Lord, nobody was hurt. Many of the homes in Jones's neighborhood suffered severe damage. Homeowners and workers spent Sunday morning salvaging what they could and picking up debris. Piece by piece and bag by bag, the long process of cleaning up continues. Jones says his faith in God will sustain him through this difficult time. We'll just have to go day by day and trust in the Lord. He'll, he'll get us through it. While many homes were severely damaged, some escaped with little more than displaced shingles or broken windows. And amid the rubble of a destroyed house, this handwritten note left by a homeowner, spray painted on a door, thanking neighbors for 22 years of memories. Areas of steeplechase are still so severely damaged, police aren't allowing non-residents to enter. That's in an effort to protect property owners from thieves and looters. Sean Fawcett, ABC7. Eyewitness News. ABC 7 Eyewitness News reporter Sean Fawcett spent much of the day today in Henry County and brings us the story. Sean. Brad, the victim of the crash was a familiar face in Henry County who will be missed by many. The plane went into a spiral and went straight down from there. The small aircraft crashed just outside of Paris Monday morning shortly after 10 a.m. The pilot, Joel Pennington of Cottage Grove, died when his experimental lightweight aircraft went down in this field near the Yoder Brothers slaughterhouse. On arrival, uh, deputies did find a single engine plane, crop dusting plane, uh, had crashed into a wooded area here off Briar Patch Lake Road. Pennington flew aircraft for more than 40 years. Him flying his crop duster was a familiar sight in Henry County was a, a very um, 
influential person in the community. He was very involved in the community. Uh, he was uh, always there to assist people whenever they needed him. Uh, he was also an accomplished uh, pilot. Uh, he flew uh, uh, airplanes and also helicopters. Simon Yoder, who owns the property Pennington was spraying during the crash, saw no signs of anything going wrong as the experimental aircraft flew over his fields. I was watching him spraying this morning and I thought he was through so I went on to town. And when I came back, why, well, I, uh, I seen Elsie coming up, running up here, and, and I, I said, what's, when the beef come out at the slaughterhouse? But, you know, I couldn't understand. She said, no, the spray plane went down, and, uh, and said it was back here in the woods. He said, I heard it crash. The FAA and NTSB have not yet determined what caused Mr. Pennington's plane to crash. It's still under investigation. Sean Fawcett, ABC7 Eyewitness News. The couple charged in the murder of a Jackson businessman and an associate returned to court this morning. 24-year-old Eric Middleton and 25-year-old Mary Thompson appeared for their preliminary hearing earlier today. Middleton is charged with killing 53-year-old Bobby Perry and 29-year-old Andrika Manning last month. Henry County authorities say they have the man responsible for a deadly shooting in Buchanan. Investigators say 63-year-old Larry Biggs shot and killed 37-year-old James Hill inside a home on Kirk's Trading Post Road Tuesday night during an argument. The landlord accused of evicting Lane College students from their East Jackson apartments without warning is telling his side of the story. Cecil McNatt owns the Lafayette Plaza apartments as well as the building behind it, the Youth Harbor Rehab Center for Girls. According to McNatt, he says he's had problems with some of his tenants, mostly Lane College students. Well, after months of fighting between the city of Jackson and a local property owner, a house which has been the center of much controversy is torn down. City workers demolished this house on Rowan Avenue just after 8 o'clock yesterday morning. The former triplex was owned by Paul Munt. This particular house had seen its share of recent tragedy. This is the second year Jackson has hosted this training session. Meteorologist Mike McAvoy joins us for a first look at weather, and um, if I had a dog, it would be a nice day to go out and walk in. A gorgeous day, absolutely. Yeah. A local chapter of the National Charity holds a fundraising event to help infants. I spent some time this afternoon at the March of Dimes March for Babies. A clear and pleasant Sunday afternoon provided excellent conditions for this year's March for Babies. Hundreds of participants put on their walking shoes to help raise awareness and money for the prevention of birth defects. The March of Dimes' main concern is the health and well-being of children. I think it's a very important thing to do and all the people you see out today, it's just a great turnout and I'm just excited about it. It's, uh, I walked in one about six years ago in Paris, Tennessee and I'm very excited about the one today. I think it's important that everybody know how special, how special life is. Anything that we can do to, to support premature birth, we're all in favor of it. Besides raising much-needed funding, the walk also commemorates the many children who have died as a result of severe birth defects. Many who participated in today's festivities have close ties to the March of Dimes mission. I was premature and we been through the whole um, neonatal experience and as a first time parent it was traumatic for us and being as we're at a place now where we can keep other people informed and let them know what the March of Dimes has done for us. It's just one part of the March of Dimes larger vision to improve the health of babies. In Jackson, Sean Fawcett, ABC7 Eyewitness News.